Now these are Dale's RZ350 parts that look like, uh, well, that, that first clear has dried up beautifully. I'm really happy with the way that came out. The tank, and this is this is the multiple repair that we've done on it, and it's a pretty sophisticated repair. Lot, it's a lot more work than you think it would be for that size repair. But we're going to do the next step on that today, which is going to be to pull off the back masking, see how this white blended in, then back mask this totally differently, so a different area is exposed, and get another coat of clear on that just to seal everything in. Now to look at this, I'm just I'm just wondering, see I haven't even figured out exactly where I'm gonna put <clears throat> the, the cut line on this, but of course the things to remember, the clear has been drying actually two days now, more than 24 hours. Clear is perfectly hard, now we can sand it and whatever. The, the thing that I always try to explain to people that are learning to paint, this, this, is a, this is a key thing to understand. This paint is dry to the touch in an hour, sometimes two hours, depending on the temperature, sometime overnight. But if you let every coat of paint dry overnight, you really stack the deck in your favor that you're not going to have an issue somewhere down the road that paint underneath there is still wanting to dry. Uh, I've always been like old school about it from the days of modeling when we used butyrate dope and I wanted to make sure every coat was dry. Every coat outgassed totally before I went on to the next step. Now in this case because we have multiple, there's multiple edges and lines and I'm trying to blend them all in and again I don't know if, if in the video that this is going into like part whatever, it doesn't matter because to have it right at the end is more important than having it done in time to go watch cartoons on TV or something. So we want to expose basically this amount. I, I don't need to just double, triple mask this just for fun. But I do, I do want to just get this off as carefully as possible. Because what I'm interested in is the edge. And that paint edge, let me show this up close. When I pull the last of the tape up, it's this edge here that I want to have exactly minimized. Now down here, it's pretty good. Up here, I've got a line. I'm going to show you the, the, the trick that I've used in the past. Now, a couple of things we're looking for here. There's the paint edge there. The clear has gone up over the tape a certain amount. I want to pull this back very very carefully um, to, again to minimize that it looks like we've got a good a good chance of getting this really nice now but what we have in essence is this is higher than the material underneath it so what I'm going to do is when I put the next layer of tape on I'm going to move it up about a 64th of an inch just that it's past the tape line and what that does instead of having one giant step that I'm going to have to use a buffing wheel to buff out, it's going to allow me to have several little steps. Now you will still be able to feel this, but that'll be in keeping with the rest of the job. But what it'll be is it'll be exactly like the rest of the job. And it'll be, I hope, perfect. I hope that Dale, uh, you know, approves of it, of course. Um, and let me just get the rest of this up. You know, as everything that that we try to do here in the shop and with the A-team and uh, helping each other. What I try to do is do the best I possibly can. Sometime that's really good. Sometime when it's not, we try to do it over again. I think that's going to be perfect. That, that's as good as it gets. So what we have right now is this area. I'm going to start back masking. I'm going to try to show this really up close because this is the essence of doing this repair. The camera does not have a really good macro lens, but you can feel, I can feel anyway, as I run my fingernail, there's an edge there. Well, we're going to try to move that tape up just enough that that edge kind of disappears. And then when we do the clear, we're going to try to just fade it, fog it in just ever so slightly. 
Now this is where it really gets to be just a little tricky. Okay, now I'm doing using the, the vinyl tape and wherever that clear ends, and I've got to look at the reflection of the light here because I want to be just a little past it by ever so slightly. And the amount I'm past it uh, is going to determine where the clear on this coat ends. And what this is going to allow is we're not going to, we're not hopefully not going to have a step that's any bigger than the the rest of the bike. So this this edge would match. Now, if Dale wanted to, one of the one of the choices we'll have at the end of this job, we can always take thousand grit paper, sand the whole tank down, and put more clear on. I don't know if he's going to want to do that, but that'll be one of the choices that he has. But in the case here, we'll at least have everything matching. It'll be similar now. And this is how we always did the model planes to get that in, in the world of model planes, being able to run your finger over that and not feel the edge is, is a significant thing. So, and again, I'm gonna outline this whole thing. And now I have to figure out, see here's where this is gonna get tricky. Where is that clear gonna end? I've gotta figure out where it's gonna end. Well, maybe down here, I, again, I got to look at this for the next five minutes and I'm going to have a cup of coffee and figure out how I'm going to do that. And so what I did this, I'm not sure you're going to see it, is I'm back a 64th of an inch, maybe a 32nd, it's not real critical. I've got everything and what I realized is because I had put clear on here and feathered it in, this, this worked out fine. So we're basically just dealing with the area that we wanted originally to repair. Now what I'm going to have to do is go get some 1200 sandpaper, maybe 1000 grit or 1200, get this perfectly flat, and then that'll be ready, hopefully for that, that final coat of clear. Now if you wanted to, you could do this probably with anything up to about 600 and get away with it. But because we're, we want to get that edge in as nice as possible, I'm going to use 1000 grit. Again, I don't think it's super critical. That <clears throat> thousand grit usually doesn't leave any scratches in the final, the final ultra, ultimate finish. So when you're refinishing something that you want to save, it's already flat, it's already smooth. Thousand grit is, is a good choice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully, over the course of about maybe 15 minutes, just blend this edge in because now I'm knocking that step down, and I'll do it by feel. See, if I took 600 grit or whatever, I could just grind this right down in a matter of five minutes, but I don't want to do that. I would like to have that edge and I'm just going to run the sandpaper up over it. I want it to be blocked, flat. I mean, the goal is, of course, that we'd like it, the final product, that you never even knew that this had been scratched, damaged, or uh, in some way repaired. And I think we will, have, we will have a good chance of achieving that in the final. When this gets returned to Dale, it will be that way. Now we're ready to put the, uh, what I hope is going to be some of the final clear on this repair. This is the clear that we've had really, really good luck with, and I've been really happy with this product. So I try to give it a little plug on all the videos. I don't sell it, and I don't get a commission, but it does work pretty good. Now what I'm really hoping is that the weather's not going to turn on us. It's not raining now, but 
It sure, it sure has the look of it could any minute. Now we got the second coat on here and I'm just looking to see if I have any issues that need addressing here. I don't think so. I think that's going to be just really nice when it's dried up. Now of course the big the big part of this. We're looking at the temperature. It's about uh, well, high 40s. That's got to dry overnight. There's nothing you can do about that. Let's let it dry overnight. <laughs> 